we have already seen that uh, regular expressions represent the class of regular languages and the regular grammars as language generic devices are intended to generate regular languages. Now, we will see an important concept or tool final automata. Final automata are important tools to understand the regular languages better. We will introduce the notion of final automata and so that they model the class of regular languages. In fact, we observed that final automata, regular grammars and regular expressions all are equivalent and uh, final automata can model can be used to model many different physical systems. For example, digital systems can be modeled or any software engineering problem can be modeled using final automata. Just consider the language regular language the set of all strings over a b having odd numbers of a's. Already we have seen that the grammar for this language is e goes to b e small b e or e goes to a o, o goes to small b o and or o goes to small a e or o goes to epsilon. This grammar we have seen that can generate the given regular language. We have also already given a diagram of representation of the same grammar, which contains three nodes E uh, labeled as E, O and dollar and there are some transitions defined according to the rule of the grammar. Now, consider this diagram of representation of the grammar and let us traverse the diagram via a sequence of A's and B's starting at the node E. If we do that, we see that at a given point of time, if we are at the node E, then so far we have encountered even number of A's. Similarly, if we are at the node O, then so far we have traversed through odd numbers of A's via the transition from E to O labeled A. Of course, if we are at the node dollar, it has the same effect as that of node O that means regarding the numbers of A's encountered so far. Rather, once we reach to dollar, then we will have we will not have any further move that means, we have to stay there only. Now, in the diagram mo that models in this diagram that models a system which understands a language nodes holds some information about the traversal. As each node is holding some information it can be considered as a state of the system and hence a state can be considered as a memory creating unit. As we are interested in the languages having finite representation, we restrict ourselves to those systems with finite numbers of states only. That means, the idea or concept that we have used in the diagram to represent a grammar, we are now going to introduce the concept of finite automata. The notion of finite automata will be explained with the help of the concept that we have already introduced in the using the diagram model. So, in such a system we have transitions between the states on symbols of the alphabet. Thus, we may call them as a finite state transition system, because we will have finite numbers of states and there will be some transitions on symbols of the alphabet from one state to another. As the transitions are predefined in a finite state, in a finite state transition system, it automatically changes states based on the symbols given as input. 
that the finite state transition system can also be called a finite state automaton or simply a finite automaton. That means, it is a device that works automatically and the plural form of automaton is automata. We have a look at a special kind of finite automata which is deterministic finite automata or simply a DFA. DFA is a type of finite automaton in which the transitions are deterministic in the sense that there will be exactly one transition from a state out of an input symbol. Formally, we define a DFA as a quintuple containing 5 components q, sigma, delta, q naught and f, where q is a finite set called the set of states, sigma is a finite set called the input alphabet, q naught which belongs to the set of states is called the initial state or start state of the system and capital F which is subset of the set of states is called the set of final set or the set of except states and delta is a transition function which is defined from q cross sigma to q and is called the transition function or the next state function. Now, note that for every state and an input symbol, the transition function delta assigns a unique next state. So, in that sense, this automaton is deterministic. Just consider an example. Say, the set of states q is uh, contains the elements p, q, r. The input alphabet contains only two elements symbols, say a, b. The set of states is simply contains one state, uh, the set of final states contains only one state from q that is the state r and delta the transition function is defined or expressed by the following transition table. So, delta on on p when the DFA is in state p and input symbol is a, it will transit to state q if it is in state p and input symbol is b, then it will transit to state p. Similarly, on state q on input symbol a, it will transit to r and so on. That is how we define the transition function. Clearly, this is a DFA because we have defined all these elements q, sigma, delta, p and f. We normally use the small letters p, q, r with or without subscript to denote states of a DFA. Now, instead of explicitly giving all the components of the quintuple of a DFA, for example, the set of states q, input alphabet sigma, transition table delta, set of final states f and so on, we may simply point out the initial state and the final states of the DFA in the table of transition function, which is called a transition table. For instance, we may use an arrow to point the initial state and we encircle all the final states. Thus, we can have an alternative representation of a DFA as all the components of the DFA now can be interpreted from this representation. For example, the DFA that we have just given can be denoted by the following transition table. So, in this case, P is the star state. So, we have written the same transition table. So, P is pointed by an arrow, meaning that P is a star state, and the state R is encircled, indicating that R is a R is the final state or only final state. So, in this case all the elements of the quintuple can be found or can be determined from this transition table. 
because the state of states contains only three states P, Q and R. Input alphabet contains two symbols A and B. Then the transition table is defined like this. The start state is P and the set of final state contains only one state that is R. So, therefore, we need not give separately or explicitly all the elements of the quintuple. Instead, we can describe the DFA by using this kind of transition table. So, this is another representation for giving a DFA. Normally, we associate some graphical representation to understand abstract components better. So, in this context also, we have a diagram representation for a DFA, say containing these five tuples, which is called a state transition diagram or simply a transition diagram. So, to give the diagram representation, every state in Q will be represented by a node. If delta P A equal to Q as defined by transition table, then there is an arc from the node P to the node Q leveled on A. If there are multiple arcs from level A 1, A 2 up to A k minus 1 and A k, one state to another state, then we simply put only one arc labeled a 1 comma a 2 up to a k from one state to the other state. And there is an arrow with no source to the initial state q naught and all the final states are indicated by double circle. For example, consider a transition diagram for the DFA that we have already given by the transition table which is as per rule that we have described. So, right now we can draw the transition diagram as below. So, the table is given by this delta on A and B. We have three states P, Q and R. P is a star state r is the final state p on a goes to q p this goes to r p and this is r r. Now, according to the rule that we have defined for constructing transition diagram for a given DFA we create nodes for the states. So, this is the star state. We indicate it by a circle from an arrow from nowhere to this state. We create a state for node for other states P Q. And since R is a final state, we indicate by double circle. And as per the transition from P on A goes to Q is indicated by giving an arrow level A from P to Q. Similarly, P on B goes to P is indicated by giving a self loop to P on symbol B. Then Q on A goes to R, an arrow labeled A goes to R, Q on B goes to P, Q on B goes to P, then R on A and B remains at state R. So, 
on A and B, it remains at state R itself. So, instead of giving two loops over here, we are using a single loop and we have labeled by A comma B. So, this is the given transition diagram for the given example. So, we have got this particular transition diagram for example, already described. The two transitions from the state R on symbols A and B are represented by a single arc from R to R labeled A B as indicated earlier. Now, the transition function delta assigns a state for each state and an input symbol. Naturally, this can be extended to all strings in C master assigning a state for each state and an input string. That means, we can have an extended transition function from q cross sigma star to sigma, which is defined as below for all q belonging to q set of states and string any string x belonging to sigma star and some symbol belonging to sigma delta hat which is an extended transition function and q on empty string will give q. That means, without taking any input, it will remain on the same state. And delta hat q comma x a, where x is a string and a is a symbol together x a is a string can be defined as recursively delta of delta hat q x, which will give us a state comma a. That means, we first apply this extension transition function on x starting at q and then apply this delta original transition function on single input a. Now, just consider this extended the, 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 the same example that we have already given and uh, let us consider how to compute this extension transition function on a string say a b a. So, in this case this string a b can be considered x according to definition and we apply delta hat on the string a b. So, p comma a b delta hat p comma a b and then we apply delta on whatever state we arrive at here comma a. That means, we use the second rule. Next, we can apply it recursively inside. The same rule can be applied over here that means, delta hat p a comma b and then apply delta on apply the same function delta on a. Similarly, we can continue further since here after this a we have only epsilon we apply it delta hat on p epsilon and then we apply the first rule since delta hat p epsilon is p itself because the, it will remain the same state. Therefore, the next step we will get from this we will get only del p itself and hence it will be delta p a that is why we are getting here delta p a. Now, since delta p a is already defined in our transition function p a gives you q. So, in the next step it will be delta p a is q. So, q b now apply delta q b delta q b is again p and so it will be delta of p a. So, delta of p a is now q. So, it will give now q. Therefore, applying delta hat extension transition function on a b a starting with this p 
we get the state q. So, that is how we compute external transition function. Now, we are in a position to define the notion of acceptance of a string and consequently acceptance of a language by a GFA. A string x belonging to sigma star is said to be accepted by a DFA A if delta hat q 0 x belongs to f. That means, if we process the string x starting in the initial state q 0, then if we arrive at a final state, then we say that the string x is accepted by the DFA A. Now, the set of all such strings accepted by the DFA A is said to be the language accepted by A and it is denoted by L of A. That means, L of A is a set of all strings x belong to sigma star such that delta hat q 0 x belongs to f. Now, consider the DFA which contains these five states with the following the transitions as given in the figure. Now, if you look carefully, the only way to reach from the initial state q 0 to the final states, the final set q 2 is through the string a b, because they will follow the path from q 0 to q 1 and q 1 to q 2. That is the only path through which we can arrive at q 2 starting at q 0. And again from q 0, we can arrive at the other final set q 3 following the path q 0 to q 1, q 1 to q 2, then q 2 to q 3. So, where the level of the path is a a b b. That means, we can reach the final states either q 2 or q 3. by following the strings, following the paths with labels as a strings so a b and a b b. That means, the language accepted by the DFA is only two strings a b and a b b. No other strings will be accepted by the DFA. So, in this case, this is a DFA because you have defined the transitions on every state on every input symbol. You see that here T is a trap state because there is no part out of T. From T, once we have arrived at T, then there is no way to go out of T to any other state. So, you have to remain in the same state. Consider the example that we have already described. So, let us see what the language of this DFA. If we observe carefully, we find that if there is a a in the input, is a and a in the, a in the input, then DFA leads us from the initial state p to the final state r. That means the string a a is accepted by the DFA. So once we are in the state r, then we continue to stay on r, whatever the input we consider. On any subsequent input we have to be in the same state r. So, if the input does not contain a a, then we will be shuffling between the state p and the state q, because whatever we take, if the, it is a string of b, we will be here in the same state p. If we take a single a, we will come to a q and from q, if we do not take an a, any b will lead us again to p. So, we have to shuffle between p and q. Therefore, the language accepted by the DFA is a set of all strings a b having a a a substring, which can be written as set of all strings of the form x a a y such that x y belongs to sigma star. So, that means, any string which has a a a substring will be accepted by the DFA and no other string will be accepted by the DFA. Let us consider 
some more examples. Just consider the example for which we have given a regular grammar that means, the set of all strings over a b set of all strings over a b having odd numbers of edges. We have already given a regular grammar for this one and we have given a diagraph representation. Now, <coughs> since it contains the set of all strings over a b containing odd numbers of edges, we need to remember the numbers of edges encountered so far and the states has to remember that information. Note that if this is a star state say q, whatever so, so if we first take b as an input you see that we have to be in the same state because it need not remember the numbers of bits you need to ignore the numbers of bits. So, therefore, on b it will remain on the same state. So, as soon as it reads the first a it has to go to some other state next state to remember that it has read odd numbers of edges. So, on a it will enter and state. So, call it as q odd and call this state as q even because the first that will in fact remember num the odd numbers of A's encountered so far and uh, the second state will remember that it has encountered so far e odd numbers of A's and the first state, first state will remember even numbers of A's. So, in the second state that means, q odd if it gets an b again. So, it need not do anything it will remain in the same state because it need not have to remember numbers of b's, but once it gets an input as a. So, it has to transit from this state to the another state which is nothing but the first state because in such a case the numbers of a's will be even. So, therefore, it is very clear that if the DFA remains in the state q even the numbers of a's in the strings read so far or process so far will be even and numbers of a's process so far will be odd if it is in the state q odd. So, therefore, if we make q odd as a final state then this DFA will accept all strings having odd numbers of ones. So, the, therefore, this is a required DFA for a given language over a b set of all strings over a b having odd numbers of a's. Similarly, instead of making this state as final state, if we make this state as the final state first one, then clearly this DFA will accept all those things having even numbers of A's. Just remember that the diagram preparation that we have given for the language the set of all strings having odd numbers of A's was like this is E O So, this was the diagram representation for the given language which you constructed for from the given regular language. Now, we see that these two are identical if we assume that this is a final state. So, in this case of course, they differ by this state and this transition epsilon and we do not allow normally in DFA this kind of transition on input epsilon, but 
Later on, we'll see that we if we allow this kind of transition, we get some other class of final automata, which we'll discuss later. Let's consider another example of a DFA. Say this DFA has. q 0 is a first state on input B suppose it remains the same state on A it transits to q 1 then on A it remains in the same state on B it goes to state q 2 and say q 2 is a final state on B it remains the same state and on A q 2 goes to state q 3 which is again suppose a final state. So, on q 3 on A it remains in q 3 itself and on B it goes to say q 4 and q 4 on a b it remains in a same state. Now, let us see the language accepted by the d f a. We will see the behavior of this d f a by observing what its states represents or what information its state retains. It is clear that if the input contains only B's, then the D F A remains in the initial state Q 0 on B, Q 0 on B will remain in the same state. On the other hand, if the input has an A, then the DFA goes to state Q 1. From Q 0, it goes to state Q 1 on input A and on any subsequent A's, it will remain in the same state Q 1. Thus, the role of state Q 1 is to remember that or understand that, that the input has at least one A. So, that is what information will be remembered by the state Q 1. Further, the DFA goes from state Q 1 to Q 2 via B. So, on input B, the DFA will go from Q 1 to Q 2 and remains in the state Q 2 on any further input which is B. Thus, Q 2 recognizes that the input has an occurrence of A B, because once it arrives at Q 2, the input must have an occurrence of A B. And since on any input, a, a, any further B it remain in the same state Q 2. Now, here Q 2, you observe that Q 2 is a final state. Therefore, the D F A accepts all those things which have one occurrence of A B. If it has a one occurrence of A B in a string, then that string will be accepted by this D F A. Subsequently, we see that if we have a number of A's, Q2 on A it will go to Q3, Q3 and Q3 on any further A's will remain in the same state Q3 itself, and Q3 is also a final state. So, all such strings will be accepted if it has one a b subsequently terminated by any numbers of b's or any numbers of a's. But from q 3, if it takes input b then it will arrive at state q 4, here q 4 is a trap state because from q 4 on any input it will remain in the state q 4 itself and q 4 is not a final state or exhausted. 
So, therefore, we see that the language of this DFA is nothing but the set of all strings x belonging to a b such that the number of is uh, sorry, such that the substring a b occurs exactly once. So, this is what the language accepted by the given the f. So, here the rules of the states are very clear in recognizing language. Consider another example. Suppose, the language the set of all strings over a b. Such that say numbers of a's in the string a is divisible by say 3. Let us construct a DFA to accept this language. Let us consider this to be a star state say q 0. Now, this autom automaton need not remember how many b's it has read so far. So, the states has to remember the numbers of a's only. If the numbers of a's in the string is divisible by 3, then it should accept otherwise it should reject should not accept. So, q 3 on b it will remain in the same state it simply ignores the numbers of b's in the input. So, once it gets an input as input a as an input then it will go to another state say it is q 1. That means, in q 1 it is clear that instead whenever it arrives at state q 1 the numbers of a's read so far is at least one a it has read that is what will remember at this point. So, again it will ignore any b's that it has read again on input a it will arrive at state say q 2 instead q 2 is clear that it has read 2 as so far. So, again it will ignore any b's it has read that means, and it will remain the same state q 2. On q 2 if it gets an a as an input, so it should go to q 0 because at that point it has read 3 as. So, any numbers of b's, but it has got so far 3 as. So, therefore, if we make q 0 as the final state, you see that. So, numbers of a's read so far will be divisible by 3, because we can take the same path again from q 0 q 1. That means, if we from q 0 again after taking it once, if it goes from q 0 to q 1, there will be 4 a's from q 2 to q 1 to q 2 when it goes on input a, it has got 5 a's from q 2 to q 0 again it has got 6 s. So, as soon as it is in state q 0, the numbers of a's read so far will be multiple of 3. Similarly, the same automaton can be modified to accept the set of all strings over a b such that numbers of a's when you divide by 3 it gives 1 as remainder. So, to accept this language simply what you need to do instead of this as final state we need to make q 1 as a final state. 
Similarly, if you want to have is if we divide the numbers of A's by 3 and the remainder is 2 in subset case, Q 2 has to be a final state instead of Q 0 or Q 2. So, therefore, here the roles of the states are very clear in remembering what information or what input it has read so far. Now, just consider the example or, or, or language so, x belonging to a b c star the set of all strings over a b c such that numbers of a's and numbers of b's is divisible by Just considering the concept that we have described in the previous example, we can easily construct a DFA for this language. Similarly, you can have many other variants, variations set of all things over A B C such that numbers of X and numbers of B is in the string when you divide by 3, say it is 2 is the remainder and you can have any combinations from this. Now, you want to give the behavior of a DFA in informal way, but prior to that we will first see since we have described, we, we have said that a DFA is a computing device, we will introduce the notion of computation. We first depict the behavior of a DFA by using a figure that will facilitate to understand how it behaves. Just consider we can explain the behavior of DFA by using this kind of figure. So, DFA contains normally an infinite tap. So, these are infinite tap and this tap is left justified. That means, left side is justified and to the right side it can go to infinity. There is a reading head which reads the inputs from the input tap. the reading head and there is a finite control the input type is normally divided into some cells so towards the right side it is infinite so there will be infinite numbers of cells in it so, every cell can contain a symbol from the input input alphabet. Say it is A, B, A, A, B, and so on. And the reading head can read one symbol at a time from the input tab. The reading head is connected to the finite control. This is the finite control. Finite control contains various states of the, the finite automata. It is Q0, Q1, Q2, and so on, or to say some Q uh, n. And there is a pointer to point to a particular state. The state which the finite automata will be in at any given point will be pointed to by this pointer. Now, with this diagram, we can describe the behavior of the DFA or finite automata in an informal manner.
So, S on the figure there are mainly three components namely input tab, reading head and finite control. It is assumed that the DFA has a left justified infinite tab to accommodate an input of any length because towards the right side it, is, it may go to infinity. The input tab is divided into cells such that each cell can accommodate one input symbol from the input alphabet and the reading head is connected to the input tab from the finite control which can read one symbol at a time from the input tab. The finite control has the states and the information of the transition function along with a pointer that points to exactly one state. At a given point of time the DFA will be in some internal state say P called the current set pointed by the pointer and the reading head will be reading a symbol say A from the input tab called the current symbol. That means, at any instant of time it is reading a symbol A from the input tab and it is a particular state suppose it is P, it is in state P pointed to by the pointer. There is P is a current set and A is the input it is reading from the input tab. Now, there is transition defined by this DFA which is defined as delta say P A. So, based on the transition this automaton or this DFA will transit automatically suppose delta P A equal to Q then it will automatically go to the state Q and the pointer will now point to that particular state Q to which it has transit to and the reading head will move one cell towards the right to read the next cell on the input tab. So, that is how the automate DFA will behave. So, if delta P A equal to Q then at the next point of time the DFA will sense its internal state from P to Q and the pointer will point to Q and the reading head will move one cell to the right. Now, we can initialize the DFA with an input string x by initialization we mean that x is placed on the input tab from the left most first that means the from the first cell of the tab with the reading head placed on the first cell. So, x will be placed on the input tab starting from the left and the reading head will point to the very first cell that means it will be reading the first input and the pointer in the finite control will point to the initial state or the star state and that is the current state of the DFA. Now, since every transition is defined on any state on any input symbol some transition is defined therefore, the DFA will transit to a next to the next state as the by transition table automatically and will continue until the input is exhausted. So, by the time the input is exhausted the current state of the DFA is a final state then the input x is accepted by the DFA there is a notion of acceptance by the DFA. Similarly, if the current state after exhausting the input is not a final state or accepted then we say that x is rejected by the DFA. So, that is how the DFA behaves. Now, we will see how we can compute by using a DFA. To see the computation we first describe the configurations the notion of configuration of a DFA. A configuration or an instance description of a DFA gives the information about the current set and the person yet to be read. Formally a configuration is an element of Q cross sigma star. Now, for a given input string x the initial configuration will always be q 0 x because the initial state is q 0 and the portion yet to be read is x the whole input string. 
and the final set will be the final configuration of the DFA will be of the form P epsilon that means the input string is exhausted this x is exhausted that is why we have got epsilon and we have arrived at some state so P. So, this is the initial configuration and this is the final configuration. The notion of competition in a DFA can be described through configurations. 